An execution team struggled for nearly three hours, puncturing him at least 11 times in his legs, ankles, and groin. Groin? Y'all punctured my man's meat. Yo! Yo. What's good, YouTube? Today we're gonna be looking at unbelievable ways convicts survive death row. If I had the death penalty, I'm gonna try everything in my heart to try to survive too. If you watch this from YouTube, make sure you catch us on Twitch. We're live every day. Links in the description. Without further ado, let's get started. Unbelievable ways convicts survived death row. Lethal injection, electric chair, hanging. Death sentences are terrifying. And for yeah. most convicts, they are the literal end of the road. Okay. Most, not all. Because there have been cases where convicts not only survive their death row sentence. Did bro survive an autopsy? Do you you know how stupid you have to be to mistake a real life person for a dead body? Whoever that person was, you'll fire them, cause what the hell? They survived it in ways that you probably would only see in a Hollywood movie. And that's what I'm about to show you in this video. We're see? about to dive into 10 unbelievable ways convicts survived death row. Okay. Number 10, Rommel Broom. It's not right to wish death on anyone, but when Rommel was sentenced to death by lethal injection, what happened? many agreed it was a sentence he deserved. He has the Krishan Rock teeth. His hairline is pretty clapped. I think a death row Always the sentence he should receive, even if he didn't do a crime. It was a sentence he deserved. Born on the 4th of June, 1956, Rommel had What'd been committing do? crimes since he could spell the word. From petty theft to carjacking to aggravated robbery, Rommel would eventually enter new realms of vileness and depravity when he assaulted a 12-year-old girl that was babysitting his niece. Then he committed you have beef with 12 year olds babysitting your family? He committed the same heinous crime against another 14 year old girl. However, this time he went a little too far what did he and do? killed her. Thankfully, the law caught up with him and he was put on death row. His sentence was death by lethal injection. However, on the day he was to be executed, the strangest thing happened. The executioners couldn't find a vein to inject the lethal dose into him. So for the next two hours, they jabbed him with needle after needle. At one point, his lawyer stated that a doctor stabbed a needle directly into Rommel's bone as he sat, restrained to his chair, wiggling in excruciating pain. Eventually, they had to postpone the execution, and Rommel's lawyers tried to appeal his re-execution. His appeal was denied, but his re-execution date was delayed until 2022. His oh. appeal... Imagine getting death penalty like what? He basically got 10 shots. I, if they can't find a vein on his shit, does that mean this nigga's dead man walking? You know how much lethal doses he got? Was denied, but his re-execution date was delayed until 20. 2022. Rommel Broom would die from COVID-19 complications in 2020, two years before his re-execution. In a way, surviving death row with nine lethal shots, but losing to COVID is insanity, bro. Way cheating death once again, but this time by dying. Number nine, John Babacombe Lee. Two things can be true about a person, and in the late 19th century, John Babacombe Lee was no exception. Okay. On one hand, John was a war veteran, having served in the British Royal Navy. On the other hand, he became a seasoned thief after retirement. Unfortunately for him, his choice of retirement would also cost him his life. In 1885, John Lee's employer was found dead, stabbed to death. John was the only man in the house, and he had a suspicious cut on he did it. Is this not the type of characters that, that you would see in like a horror movie? Y'all know when they're trying to like leave the area or they enter it? I feel like you would see this man in the neighborhood, like just in the corner on some shit, telling you, warning you like to leave on his arm. And he already had a suspicious reputation. So instead of a proper trial that many still believe would have found him not guilty of the crime, John was sent to the gallows. However, on the day of his execution, they tried to make John hang three times. And each of those three times, the trap door on the scaffold refused to open. Even after they checked it and tried it without him and it worked, the moment he was placed back on the gallows, it stopped working. Eventually, everyone present began to feel like they were participating in some mental torture experiment. The medical officer got tired and refused. This is the reason why he survived. If you're built like this, then there's no way for people to hang you because you have no neck. Used to continue, and John Lee's sentence was eventually commuted to a life sentence. And after years and years of appeals, he was eventually released in 1907. Number eight, Willie Francis. The story of Willie Francis is one of the- How do you go from getting the death penalty get to getting released. So it was God telling y'all that y'all were incorrect. Because what the hell? Good thing he didn't die. Those stories that is bound to make your blood boil. What Why? Happened? Well, because it happened in a time of racial injustice. What Willie Francis was sentenced to death by electrocution for a crime he did not commit. What did he do? In what 1944, happened? Andrew Thomas, a pharmacist in Louisiana, was shot and killed, and his murder remained unsolved for nine months until Willie Francis was arrested in Texas for a different crime. According Damn, to the police, Willie on. was carrying the pharmacist's wallet. Killed, and his murder remained unsolved for nine months until Willie Francis was. 
was arrested in Texas for a different crime. According to the police, Willie was carrying the pharmacist's wallet in his pocket. However, the crucial evidence was not submitted during the trial that would follow. There were so yeah. many inconsistencies in the claims that the police made that by the time the trial was through, you could clearly see how racially motivated the whole thing was. Yeah. Eventually, on the day of Willie's execution, what he was happened? sitting in the chair when all of a sudden he began screaming, take it off, take Damn. it off, let me breathe. It turned out that the Damn. electric chair had not been properly rigged because the guard in charge was drunk when he set it up. So instead of yeah. killing Willie, it was just sending volts of electricity through his body that fried him without taking his life. When Willie was eventually released, he tried to appeal for his freedom. Sadly, his appeal was rejected and was eventually re-electrocuted to death. <laughs> I was really hoping for like a good story. Like it wasn't meant to happen. And then they figure out it's not him. Just when they asked to do it again, they double back. Yo, bro, chat, you better thank God you're living in this time period because you know how insane it is to be death sentenced for a crime you did not commit, surviving it and going back to that death sentence? That means you're basically getting packed for no reason. A year after, at the age of 17. Number seven, the man named Alireza. Why on earth would you try to smuggle crystal meth into Iran in the 21st century? That's the question you might probably want to ask an anonymous man we only know as Ali Reza, who was caught in the act I just described in October 2013. Okay. He was slated to be executed by hanging and was pronounced dead after 12 minutes of hanging. Then his body was taken to the morgue. The next day, Ali Reza's family was to collect his body for burial. However, a worker at the morgue noticed condensation on the plastic wrap around the condemned man. By some stroke of luck, Ali Reza was alive and they immediately took him to a nearby hospital. However, Iranian authorities were not too happy with his survival and they issued a statement ordering Ali Reza to be hanged again once he'd recovered. By their definition, they hadn't sentenced him to be hanged, they had sentenced him to death. This loop Getting the death sentence for doing drugs is insane. To all you people that smoke in America, you're lucky. They were right here in Iran, you're probably gonna get stoned. Paul became a subject of international debate and after human rights fought against their verdict, they took a step back and Iran's justice minister issued a statement that he would not be re-executed. Number six, Anne Green. I don't know why death by hanging went out of style, but a good guess is that there were just too many people surviving it. One such person was a lady called Anne Green, who in the 17th century was sentenced to the gallows for the most hypocritical reason. The 1600s wasn't a good time to be alive. And if you're a woman, well, then oh, let's just no. say you had more points taken from you. Yes. What's worse, Anne Green had the misfortune of being a domestic servant during this time period. Oh, One day, she was impregnated by her her master's grandson. And after the usual nine months, the child was stillborn. When Anne tried and failed to hide the dead baby, she was convicted. Oh, damn. This got deep. Of infanticide and sentenced to death by hanging. And this is where things get really interesting. After she was violently hanged, the doctors still found a pulse and proceeded to pull out all the medieval stops possible, including giving her a tobacco smoke enema. She recovered fully, and the judge came to agree that her survival was a sign from God that she was innocent. I don't know about you. How do you survive getting hanged? There's only one way to find out, Chad. Let me get the chair. Being a person of color, being a woman, and being gay was probably like craziest things back then because you did not get shit. Back in the day with women, I feel like if you did anything, you're gonna be classified as a witch. But I think it would have been nice if the sign came a little earlier. Anyway, Anne went on to to have a happy life. She got married and settled down with her kids. She even kept her coffin as a souvenir. Number five, Zoleika Kadkoda. Without laws, society will collapse, and that's why they exist to maintain order. With that established, there are some laws that just shouldn't exist. And like. in Iran, one of such laws caught up with a 20-year-old lady called Zoleika Kadkoda. In Y'all about to bury her to death? No way. The other stories you told us that they had the death sentence and they survived and then, and then they got it again. I hope she survives. 1997, when she was accused of adultery and sentenced to death by stoning. Y'all mad that she's out here getting work? Of course, adultery is a sin, all right, in a lot of religions, but you do not kill someone for that. It is accused. She probably didn't even do it. Who knows? The process of stoning her is quite macabre. It requires the victim to be buried to their waist in the ground before being pelted with stones. However, halfway through the stoning, members of Zoleika's village stormed the scene and demanded that the stoning be stopped. At this point, Zoleika was no longer moving and was presumed dead. However, after she was taken to the morgue, she suddenly began to breathe again and was taken to the hospital. Zoleika survived. Over time, she made a full recovery and an appeal for amnesty was submitted to the court on her behalf to give her a full pardon. Eventually, after international outcry, the Iranian authorities folded and informed Amnesty International that the death sentence against Zoleika Kadkoda had been lifted and she was released 
on the 26th of November, 1997. So what happens to the men? And don't you pump fake? Yeah, I'm glad she didn't die, but what happens to the men? If you're gonna get her in trouble for adultery, what about the guy she cheated on him and with? Seven. Number four. William Duell. This is another case of a botched hanging that happened in 1740 to a 17 year old named William Duell. He was convicted of being an accessory to the assault of Sarah Griffin in England and was sentenced to death. On the 24th of November 1740, he, along with four others, were hanged in Tyburn. And to show you that the executioner really meant business, William's body was left to hang for at least 20 minutes. At the time, Hanged criminals were taken to an anatomy theater, where their bodies would be cut up and dissected for medical training. However, when William's supposedly dead body was stripped and laid bare on a cutting board, the student tasked with dissecting him noticed that the young- Yo! What I'm realizing is that death penalties back then were, were way worse than they are now. What do you mean you're doing an anatomy class on a real life human being? I'm already finding it hard doing anatomy on frogs. What happened to just a guillotine? Young man was still breathing, slowly. Within minutes, his breathing had gotten quicker, and two hours later, he was able to sit upright. William had survived. Later that night, he was sent back to prison, and the days that followed, they realized that the young man could not even remember being hanged. When the public got to hear of his case, they rallied behind him and protested for his freedom. Eventually, the authorities agreed, and instead of a death sentence, he was exiled to- Bro survived on 1HP, bro survived the gulag, he survived the storm, the purple storm. But one thing I'm noticing a trend, y'all rally when someone survives the death? Why didn't y'all rally before they were about to die? Boston, where he lived a full life, dying at the age of 85. Number three, John Half Hanged Smith. This is the last case case of a botched hanging on this list, I promise. And it's also the most bizarre, because the convict, John Half Hanged Smith, will probably make you believe in magic with how much he survived his execution. John was a veteran of the 15th and 16th century. He had served in the British Navy, but when he was discharged, he became a burglar, the kind okay. you've probably heard of in Charles Dickens novels. By the 5th of December, 1705, the long arm of the law caught up with John, and he was convicted with two cases of burglary and sentenced to death by hanging. So he didn't kill anyone. He didn't shoot anyone. He didn't put fire in anyone's home. He stole. You're killing someone because they stole something. Y'all couldn't just say some shit like, I don't know, take his hand off. You're willing to kill the dude? Bro, I'm telling y'all, bro. Be thankful that you guys live in the 21st century. Pretty harsh for the crime, but okay. However, John couldn't be bothered. He if this is how he looks, I understand. Unibrow and a Vegeta hairline? Yeah, bro. Your time has come. Nah, I'm just playing. So laid back, you would probably think he knew something no one else did. And he probably did. Because when they hanged him in front of everyone present, John's neck simply refused to break. For 25 minutes, John Smith was swaying, half alive, half dead, and in terrible pain. I know why. Y'all wanna see his neck? There's only one neck that is strong enough to withstand 20 minutes of hanging in its wide neck. Some people tried to pull his legs to end his suffering. Eventually, the people who came to watch him die begged for him to be cut loose. And eventually, he was. John would later state that he preferred to stay hanging because cutting him down caused him much more pain. Some years later, John Smith was once again caught stealing. <laughs> Imagine, you're literally getting hanged on the brink of death and you're about to die and everyone called for you to leave just for your ass to steal again. Dude, did you not learn a single thing? Bro was meant to steal. There's gotta be Sly Cooper or some shit. There's gotta be Nami and was once again brought before the law. But the jury got cold feet. Don't ask me how that happened, I'm equally confused. And the judge decided to set him free. Some months after this incident, John Smith was once again captured for theft and once again brought to trial. But it Again? You know what, as much as I don't want him to get the death penalty for burglary, for you to know the law and still do it again after you went through, the, through all the implications of it, you're weird, bro. Day before his trial, the prosecutor died, and once again, John was set free. It wasn't until 1727, when he was 66 years old, that the law finally grabbed him by the throat. However, instead of death, he was exiled to the state of Virginia, which at the time was the equivalent of death for a man his age. Number two, Doyle Ham. If anyone ever told you that lethal injection is the most humane way to take a convict's life, show them the story of Doyle Ham. You happened? could say that Doyle Ham was destined for his fate. He was born the 10th of 12 kids. Six of his older siblings had spent time in jail before he could even walk, and his father was a hardened criminal. Okay. So it wasn't surprising that Doyle took the dangerous road of crime through his life. What Unfortunately, happened? 
Unfortunately for him, a robbery gone wrong that led to the death of a clerk resulted in his own arrest when he was just 20. The year was 1987. Okay. Later that year, he was sentenced to death by electrocution in Oklahoma. But you know how these things go. Legal drama and appeals delayed his sentence until electrocution was no longer fashionable in what Oklahoma. Happened? Lethal okay. injection was adopted. But there was a problem. Doyle now had cancer, and his doctors told his executioners that it would be impossible to find a vein for the injection because of Doyle's medications. Wait, you don't get veins after you get cancer? I thought everyone had veins. So what do they do instead? Unsurprisingly, the executioners didn't listen. And on execution day, an execution team struggled for nearly three hours, puncturing him at least 11 times in his legs, ankles, and groin. And groin? Y'all punctured my man's meat. Yo! So that would be death by the meat. Apparently injuring several organs before giving up at 11.27 p.m. Because the legal death warrant expired at midnight. It was torture, plain and simple. Luckily for Doyle, the cruelty of the act led to a sentence change. He was given life, literally. And he died at the age of 64 from complications of his cancer. I ain't gonna lie, shout out to you for wanting to sort of like live life after that because they punctured you in your meat with a lethal injection. You were not gonna use it Anyway, since you were in jail, unless you like boys, but that's crazy. Population control. Number one, Wenceslao Mogul. The story of Wenceslao is as incredible as it is terrifying, and it happened during the Mexican Revolution of the early 1900s. Wenceslao was fighting in this war as a soldier when he was captured by the Mexican state and sentenced to death by firing squad without trial. Okay. Now, execution of this kind and at this time required 10 gunmen, nine of which would shoot randomly at the convict's body, while the 10th would aim for a vital organ that would ensure the convict's death. When Wenceslao was shot, his 10th officer shot him in the head. There was no way he was supposed to survive it, and they thought he actually was dead, but he wasn't. Instead, through great pain, Wenceslao pretended to be dead. Yo, can I see his face? Bro, is that a dream? No, no, I'm playing, but what bullet did he hit you with for your face to just carve in? What the hell type of suction ass bullet is that? You might as well grow a beard, bro. What is wrong with people's teeth back then? God damn, but but anyways, YouTube, that does conclude the video. As you can see, people have survived death row. So if you ever get the death row, you might survive. If you're watching this from YouTube, make sure you guys subscribe and catch us on Twitch. Join the Discord, all that good stuff. We're live every day. Watch it for life. Love y'all. And peace.